What's up, everyone? I'm very clearly away from home right now. I'm sort of on a mini vacation, but I still wanted to get you guys the updated information for the Season 2 Reloaded patch. So that's what this whole video is going to be about. I've got some really good comparisons here for pre-patch to post-patch. Uh, and TGD is also updated as well with most things, not the attachment changes, but we'll go over all that as we're going through it. As always, if you guys appreciate the work that I put into this stuff, don't forget to drop a subscription, like the video, comment on the video to help out with the algorithm. But let's jump into it, and we will talk about all the Season 2 Reloaded patch changes. Obviously, this video is going to be focused on weapon changes because that's what I talk about all the time. So we're going to go one by one. The first weapon change was the STV-556. It says they added a minimum damage against armor. So this is something I've covered in the past. Some of the weapons have sort of like a damage value that if, if they have armor plates on and they get hit with a bullet and there's a minimum armor damage for that weapon, it will update the damage to that armor damage if the damage that would have been done was below that value. So if you shoot this guy and they... We're supposed to take 18 damage without this armor damage. Now that it has this new minimum armor damage, that will be updated to either 22 or 23 damage. I will update TGD to have this functionality soon, but the when I was testing this, I got 22 or 23, which was weird. So maybe it's like kind of like the Fennec profile where it varies across the body. Um, so yeah, it's like plus four damage at range, but not a, not a huge change there, but it will be a nice little buff for the STB at range. The Rawl was hit with some pretty big changes, so reading what they said from the patch notes in the top left, reduced the far range damage, small increase to current close range damage, reduced headshot damage, reduced upper torso damage, and increased recoil. So I went in and tested all of these changes myself this morning. Uh, it took me, took me many hours, so if you guys appreciate this stuff, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all those things. Um, but the damage profile that I found is in the top right here, so... You can see what they said is true in the first damage range, a little bit of buff to the damage overall. Second damage range, slight nerf, but there is this new uh, upper arm, same as chest multiplier that I found. So that is a buff across the board at all damage ranges, but they did reduce the damage in that mid range for chest, neck, and head. And then out past 42 meters, there never used to be this drop off. This is a brand new drop off. So these are the new values on the right, 52, 41, 41, 37, 34, 34. 41 to the upper arm and 34 to the lower arm so yeah overall a nerf to the damage if you look at the combination ttk on tgd i have both the pre-patch version and the current version live on the site and you can see out in that last damage drop off it is one extra shot to kill now which is a pretty pretty big hit to the raw and then it also says they increase the recoil so i have that on tgd as well you can see pre-patch is the orange here the raw with post patch values has just way more recoil it's not it doesn't just stop in that little circle and just sit there like it used to so i think the raw is probably pretty much dead with these changes unfortunately um, i'll need to see what this recoil actually feels like but just looking at the comparison there it uh, pretty dramatically nerfed the rpk also caught a bit of a nerf so they reduced the walking speed i didn't actually test that because it's not super important for the role that the rpk plays Reduce muzzle velocity, I did test this. Basically, it has the same muzzle velocity as the ARs now. Um, so that was, when it first came out, it had about 700 meters per second muzzle velocity. And now it's down at about 590. So it's pretty big, pretty big um, nerf there. Uh, my value on TGD was at 700. Sim had 620. So I'm wondering if there was a patch recently where it got changed to 620 and then this patch nerfed it even further. Um, so that's why I said minus 4% because it went from 620 to 590. As for the Saken, MG38 says they reduced damage range. So I wanted to show this with the new premium feature on TGD. This is the damage range, damage range maps. You can see a visual representation on all the multiplayer maps of damage ranges um, in a concentric circles around where you would be standing. So in this case, you'd be standing right on the 184, which is the time to kill of the gun uh, in that first range. And then you can see the old was 36 meters and 61 meters. So we've got the two red rings would be... Um, basically old and new in the first damage range, and then the orange ring would be old and new of the uh, last damage range. So a little bit different here. This is Shoot House. You can see it's not a huge difference there um, for where these actually line up across the map, but it is you know five meters at the, mo the, the last range and three meters at the close range. The MX-9 also had a slight buff, so I'm, same thing here, increased the mid damage ranges. So you can see the first damage range on the damage range maps on TGD is the same at 9.7 meters. And then the second damage range, these orange rings, uh, went from 20.3 meters up to 26 meters. So a really big buff of about 6 meters of range there. That's a pretty significant um, amount you can see on the map. And then the second damage drop off as well used to be 34 meters and now it's 37. So a nice buff to the damage range values for the MX-9. The Vast P also got a buff. So 
it says they increase the sprint to fire time. This is a, a typo. It should say increase sprint to fire speed or decrease the sprint to fire time. So it used to have, I think it was probably a mistake. It used to have AR sprint to fire time at 210 milliseconds. And now they've reduced it down to a standard SMG sprint to fire of 110 milliseconds. And then also they increase the damage ranges. So this is the damage range map again. Same idea. First damage range is the same out to 16 meters. So that's a really long first damage range for an SMG. Second damage range, these orange rings went from 21.8 up to 26, so about a 4 meter increase in damage range there on the second drop. And then the third drop got about 5 meters from 33.5 up to 38. And then the last drop went from 41.9 up to 48. So just overall, big damage range big damage range increases, and it finally has the correct sprint-to-fire time for an SMG. So the PDSW528, the P90, it's always kind of had this problem you can see on the right where... The iron sights, the back of the gun was almost like raised up too much from the perspective of where you were looking in game. So the the back part of the iron sights were too high, made it really hard to see your target and where you were shooting. They've update this, updated this now. This is the cur current image on the left there. You can see much, much better iron sights compared to what they used to be. Vel 46 also got a nice buff here. So this says they increased close damage ranges and then they fixed attributes on the 30 round mag to improve handling and mobility. So I'm just going to talk about the damage ranges here. Same idea. We've got the, the damage range map on TGD up here. Um, this is a premium feature again. Uh, but the first damage range went from 10.2 up to 13.1. So a really nice buff there. The second damage range went from 15.2 up to 20.3. So the first damage range almost reaches where the second damage drop off was. Uh, after this buff. So that's huge. And you get an extra 5 meters for that second damage range. Third damage range is 4.4 meters increase from 21.6 up to 26. And then the last damage range also went up by about 5 meters up to 41 meters. So this is an interesting change. This will kind of put it in a similar spot as the P90. We'll have to compare those when I do an updated meta video and see how they, they stack up now. But that extra damage range is really going to help it in comparison to something like the P90. Lockman Sub also got some changes, so reduced movement speed, reduced aim down sight speed, improved recoil control, and then this barrel, which I don't even think is available in-game, had some stuff changed about it. So talking about recoil first, I tested the recoil and put it on TGD. Pre-patch pre is orange, post-patch is the more reddish color, and the recoil looks virtually identical to me, so I don't see any changes here. Um, it came out actually a little bit higher, but that could just be the randomness of the recoil pattern. Reduced movement speeds, so I tested all the different movement speeds. I found that it was about 0 0.06 meters per second slower in regular movement. Sprint speed stayed about the same. Tax sprint speed was about 0.1 meters per second slower, so a little bit slower, not a huge change here. And then ADS movement speed was um, 0 0.05 meters per second slower. So again, pretty minor changes here. Lockman Sub is going to play basically exactly how it did before. They also say they changed the aim down sight speed. Uh, this came out to 196 over multiple tests here, but... I am using my laptop to test, which can only push about 150 FPS, so the accuracy is not going to be quite as good as usual, but I did multiple tests for most of these things and got these numbers after averaging out those, those results. So ADS time is basically exactly the same as it was before. All right, the new gun. So the Tempest Torrent Marksman Rifle. It's just a DMR. It fits in very well with like the TAC-M and the EBR. Currently, I think the TAC-M is the best before this gun came out, so I put the EBR, TAC-M, and Tempest Torrent on a combination shot location TTK chart just to show you guys this. It's up on TGD. I don't have any of the stats except the stats that pertain to damage. So I have the obviously damage profile and RPM up on there, but really none of the other base stats are tested yet. I'll do that as soon as I can. But you can see looking at this chart, uh, the Tempest Torrent is the new one. The blue line kind of falls in between the TAC M and EBR in the close damage ranges. And then out at longer ranges, it actually ends up being. The best time to kill so the tac m is disgusting you can get these two or three shot kills uh in that first damage range out to like 60 meters once you put attachments on it it's a ton of fun to use um, but it's the tac m is not great at range just because it's it gets pretty hard to hit those shots so it'll be interesting to see how the tempest torrent fits in because it's it's about 70 meters 70 milliseconds slower time to kill in the first range but then it is you know 60 milliseconds faster in the last damage range so it could be pretty good We'll have to see how the recoil works out, but this is just kind of preliminary time to kill potential that I found. For the shotguns, I didn't actually test this because shotguns are kind of tricky with their individual pellet damage and damage caps and stuff like that. This is going to be more of a feel thing that we'll just have to see how much the difference was was made with these, these nerfs. So the KV broadside has been uh, basically the doof-doof on steroids from my understanding from, from Warzone 1. So reduced lower torso damage, straight up 
nerf to damage there. 12 gauge ammo reduced the damage ranges, reduced the close range damage. And then for Dragon's Breath, they reduced the damage ranges, reduced the close range damage, and a global reduction to the 12 gauge Dragon's Breath uh, residual damage. So overall, it sounds like a big nerf, but again, if those numbers are small, it might not make that much of a difference. So we'll have to see how this actually plays in game and get a feel for it. The Bryson 800 and Bryson 890 shotguns um, had their headshot damage increased for all the slugs and then they also added a minimum damage against armor so again that's a that's a buff for longer range engagements with those two shotguns onto the attachment changes i did not test attachments um i might be able to do this when i get back from this vacation but i just wanted to get the base changes to the weapons made uh, so global changes flinch says reduced recenter speed so that means increase the recenter time which is a a Increase to flinch, basically. When you get flinched, it'll take it longer for the gun to recenter back to the same point. Um, and then also it says minor increase to flinch on ARs, SMGs, LMGs, and shotguns. So basically they made flinch worse, which I don't, I don't like. Uh, flinch is a super annoying mechanic to me in a lot of cases, but we'll see how it plays. Ammunition changes, hollow point rounds. Uh, they reduced the bullet velocity, or removed the bullet velocity penalty. Frangible rounds. They changed the healing delay timer, so frangible rounds, when you shoot someone with that, their health doesn't come back for longer. Um, this lengthens the overall delay on the player that is hit, so it is going to keep them from healing for longer now. They also removed the damage range penalty, so they're trying to buff these ammo ammunitions, I think, to get people to use them instead of high velocity, um, because high velocity is just such a ridiculously good attachment that it's pretty much the only choice in most cases. Overpressure rounds, they removed the recoil penalty and increased the imparted flinch on the other player. So again, increasing flinch even more. This could be actually a, a decent option. Uh, we'll have to see how bad this is now in combo with increasing flinch as a whole. 12 gauge dragon's breath, they reduced the residual damage while burning. And then 12 gauge slugs and HE slugs added minimum damage against armor. So that's basically a buff at longer ranges. For the underbarrel launchers, they removed movement penalties from all of them, and they added a recoil control bonus to the grenade and shotgun launchers, and they also added one extra ammunition st stock to the grenade launchers, so a buff across the board for the underbarrel launchers there. Uh, the stocks, they reduced the flinch received on no stock modifications, so if you're using no stock, it must have increased your flinch before. That's not something I was even aware of, um, but they have reduced that, so it doesn't hurt as much as it did before. Bipod grips, they reduced the ADS penalty for the Bipod V9 grip. Or B2, BP2 bipod grip fixed a bug in stat reporting. I don't even know what that means. Added hip recoil control, reduced hip walking speed, removed ADS penalty, and added grip to compatible LMGs and marksman rifles. So this appears to be just a new grip that's going to be available for LMGs and marksman rifles. Underbell grips, so reduced ADS penalty on all underbell grips. This makes sense. To me, because before the penalties were too great to even really consider them over like a muzzle, the muzzles reduced recoil so much more and had similar, if not even better ADS penalties than these. So that's a nice buff. And then they also reduced the movement speed penalty for all vertical grips. So that would be uh, like the Merc 4 grip kind of style, I would assume. Muzzle attachments, the breachers, nobody uses these. Um, added a hip movement speed buff so that will actually increase movement speed so that, that is a big change there that's a new attachment slot where we might be able to actually uh, increase our movement speed with another attachment flash hiders reduced the ADS penalty no one uses those anyway optics changes reduced ADS penalty on hollow optics so holographic optics have reduced penalties now removed the movement penalties on hollow optics so a lot of the optics had ADS movement speed penalties and then they also reduced the ADS and movement penalties from all thermal, hybrid, and variable zoom optics and reduced the ADS penalty on shotgun scopes. I mean, this is a change we've all really been asking for here, the reduced ADS penalty on shotgun scopes. That's uh, just love to see that change. Comb attachments. So fixed handling, stat UI on, Schlager, yada, yada. Not even going to read those. Um, so there were some handling stats that were messed up for some of these attachments, apparently. And last up, some equipment changes. Frag grenades now do increased damage to armor, claymores as well, and Semtex. So those three, those three um, equipments just got buffed. They do more damage now if your opponent is wearing armor. Um, but yeah, nothing else to say there. All right, everybody, that is it for the video. If you appreciate all the work I put into this, it took me all morning to test all this stuff and get them updated and get them live on TGD. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, drop a like on the video, comment on the video, let me know what you guys are thinking about season two. Me, it's kind of, I don't know, kind of lackluster, but we will see how it actually turns out. There could have been more changes to the back end. I've heard rumors that servers feel much better, which is going to be amazing if that's true, because the servers have just felt kind of, kind of bad ever since Warzone 2 came out. So we'll see. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.